Ladies and gentlemen, if you enjoy my video, please click the like button and share the video. It is the only way the YouTube algorithms really notices me. I will be very grateful to you. Whispers in the dark, the Firefly's curse. Scary story is published by Scare Fiction. Chapter 1. A Glimmering Sting. The melody choked in my throat, a strangled remnant of the vibrant song I'd been chasing. Frustration gnawed at me like a starving beast. Usually, music spilled from my fingertips like a babbling brook, each note a reflection of the fiery spirit that pulsed within. Tonight, the well was dry, leaving behind a hollow silence as heavy as the willow's gnarled branches overhead. Writer's block, huh? Sarah's voice, laced with a teasing lilt, sliced through the tension. She materialized beside me, a mischievous glint in her eyes. A picnic basket overflowing with the promise of cheesy pasta and questionable wine dangling precariously from her arm. Come on. Let's drown your artistic demons in a vat of carbs. A reluctant smile tugged at the corner of my lips. You know me too well, troublemaker, I teased, setting the guitar down with a sigh. Perhaps a culinary escape was just the muse I needed. We settled beneath the ancient willow, its leaves whispering secrets in the twilight breeze. Sarah, with the practiced efficiency of a seasoned picnic warrior, uncorked the wine. The satisfying pop echoed like a gunshot in the peaceful symphony of chirping crickets and rustling leaves. Laughter bubbled up as we devoured the pasta, a comforting counterpoint to the creative drought plaguing me. Sarah, ever the storyteller, regaled me with her latest dating disaster, embellishing every awkward detail for maximum comedic effect. Her outrageous tales, punctuated by bursts of laughter, momentarily banished the frustration gnawing at my insides. But the serenity of the night fractured as the first firefly flickered to life. This wasn't the usual scattering of twinkling lights. Tonight, a swirling vortex of bioluminescent insects materialized, mesmerizing in its beauty, yet somehow unsettling. A primal urge, a siren call of the unknown, tugged at me, urging me to reach out and touch the otherworldly glow. Ignoring the prickling sensation that danced across my skin, I stretched out a tentative hand. As my fingertips brushed against the tiny glowing bodies, a jolt of heat shot up my arm, momentarily stealing my breath. The fireflies, as if responding to my touch, intensified their light bathing the meadow in an ethereal glow like a scene from a forgotten fairy tale. When the brilliance subsided, the swarm vanished, leaving behind an unsettling silence, broken only by the frantic pounding of my heart. An insistent throbbing pulsed at the point of contact. Panic clawed at my throat as I flipped my wrist over. There, etched onto my skin in intricate detail, was a mark resembling a stylized firefly. The delicate lines shimmered with an otherworldly light, a permanent reminder of my encounter. Amelia, what's wrong? Sarah's voice, laced with concern, shattered the silence. My voice hitched. There's, there's a mark, I stammered, thrusting my wrist towards her. Sarah's brow furrowed as she examined the mark, a flicker of unease crossing her eyes. Oh, that's trippy, she admitted, her voice barely a whisper. It's kind of cool, like a mystical tattoo, but also kind of creepy. It wasn't there before, I insisted, a tremor in my voice betraying the rising fear that coiled in my stomach. Sarah hesitated, a flicker of worry clouding her eyes. Maybe not, she conceded. Her voice took on a nervous edge. But hey. At least it's a conversation starter. Just hope it's not some kind of bioluminescent bug curse. A forced laugh escaped my lips, a hollow sound in the oppressive silence. The playful banter died on my tongue, replaced by a metallic taste of dread. The mark 
mesmerizing yet unsettling, pulsed with a faint warmth. It felt like a foreign entity, a cryptic message etched onto my skin. As we packed up our picnic, the once comforting glow of the fireflies now seemed sinister. Stealing a glance back at the meadow, a shiver crawled down my spine. Playful lights seemed to wink at me, a silent promise of something ominous lurking beneath the beauty. The melody remained stubbornly silent, replaced by a new, unsettling rhythm, the rapid pulse of my own heartbeat, a drumbeat echoing the fear that had taken root within me. Chapter 2 A Creeping Disquiet The drive home was shrouded in an unsettling silence. The playful banter that usually filled the car with Sarah by my side was replaced by a thick tension that hung heavy in the air. My gaze kept flickering to the mark on my wrist, the faint glow pulsating like a malevolent heartbeat. Are you sure you're okay, Amelia? Sarah finally asked, her voice laced with concern. You've been awfully quiet since. Well, since the firefly thing. I don't know, I admitted, forcing a smile that felt strained even to me. The mark. It just feels wrong. Like something alien is clinging to me. Sarah reached out, her touch hesitant, and traced the mark with her fingertip. It does look pretty strange, she conceded, but maybe it's harmless. Like a weird birthmark or something. I scoffed, the sound hollow in the car's quiet interior. Birthmarks don't throb with an otherworldly light, Sarah. She fell silent again, the worry etched on her face, a stark contrast to her usual carefree demeanor. The rest of the drive passed in a blur, punctuated only by the rhythmic hum of the engine and the nagging unease gnawing at my insides. Back at my apartment, the first thing I did was rush to the bathroom flinging open the medicine cabinet and grabbing a hand mirror. In the harsh fluorescent light, the mark seemed even more sinister. The delicate lines, once mesmerizing, now resembled a cryptic inscription. A foreign language scrawled onto my skin. Panic clawed at my throat. I scrubbed my wrist, desperate to erase the mark, but it wouldn't budge. Tears welled up in my eyes, blurring my vision. What had I done? Why had I reached out to the fireflies? A sudden ringtone jolted me from my despair. It was Sarah. Hey, I answered, my voice thick with emotion. Are you okay? Sarah's voice crackled through the receiver. Listen, I did some digging online. Turns out there are some folklore stories about fireflies and curses. My heart hammered against my ribs. Curses, I whispered, dread coiling in my stomach. Yeah, Sarah said hesitantly. Apparently, in some cultures, fireflies are seen as harbingers of bad luck or even spirits that steal memories. The blood drained from my face, the forgotten melody, the gnawing sense of detachment. Could it be connected? Memories? I croaked. Look. I don't know how much truth there is to it, Sarah rushed to reassure me. It's probably just a bunch of old wives' tales. But maybe we should do some more research. I clung to her words like a lifeline. Maybe it was just a coincidence. Maybe Mark was harmless. But something deep within me, a primal sense of unease, whispered a different story. That night, sleep eluded me. The rhythmic throb of the mark echoed in my ears, a constant reminder of the encounter in the meadow. Every time I closed my eyes, fragmented memories flickered through my mind, faces and places I couldn't quite grasp. The fear that had been simmering all evening finally boiled over, leaving me a trembling mess. As the first rays of dawn painted the sky with streaks of orange and pink, a steely resolve settled over me. I wouldn't let this control me. I would find out what the mark was and how to break whatever curse it held. But more importantly, I had to recover my lost memories, no matter the cost. Chapter 3 Whispers in the Dead of Night Sleep, once a welcome visitor, a gentle thief of consciousness, 
had become a battlefield. The darkness wasn't a comforting embrace anymore, but a canvas upon which my anxieties played out in vivid, fragmented scenes. Faces flickered in the periphery of my vision, a woman with eyes as warm as summer rain, a bustling marketplace filled with exotic smells, a melody that tugged at the edges of my memory, but remained frustratedly out of reach. These fragmented memories were punctuated by flashes of chilling premonitions, a desolate landscape bathed in an unnatural, sickly green light. A towering, skeletal figure with eyes that burned like embers. A guttural voice rasping my name, the sound sending shivers down my spine even in the waking world. Exhaustion gnawed at me like a persistent rodent. The dark circles under my eyes mirrored the despair that threatened to consume me. Every time I drifted off, the whispers began. They weren't distinct words but rather wispy tendrils of sound swirling around me like a malevolent fog. They carried a sense of urgency, a cryptic message that I desperately wanted to decipher. Desperate for a sliver of normalcy, I reached for my guitar. But as my fingers brushed against the strings, the pulsating glow from the mark on my wrist intensified. It felt like a rebuke, a reminder of the normalcy I'd forfeited. Frustrated, I tossed the guitar onto the couch, the sound echoing like a gunshot in the stillness of the night. The silence was shattered by a new sound, a soft rustling outside my window. Dawn was still hours away, and a prickle of unease ran down my spine. I crept towards the window, heart hammering in my chest. Peering through the blinds, I saw nothing but the inky blackness of the night. Yet, the rustling persisted. Taking a deep breath, I fumbled from my phone, using its weak flashlight as a makeshift weapon. With trembling hands, I slid the window open a crack. The rustling grew louder, accompanied by a faint, bioluminescent glow emanating from beyond the glass. My breath hitched in my throat, fireflies. But these weren't the playful, scattered lights of summer evenings. These were tightly clustered, their bioluminescence swirling in a mesmerizing, hypnotic pattern. A primal urge, the same one I'd felt in the meadow, tugged at me. This time, however, it wasn't tinged with curiosity, but with a desperate hope. Maybe the fireflies held the key to unlocking the whispers, the fragmented memories, the chilling premonitions. Maybe they were the source of the curse, or perhaps the only ones who could break it. Hesitantly, I pushed the window open wider. The murmur of whispers intensified, swirling around me like a tangible force. Fireflies drifted closer, their tiny bodies pulsing with an otherworldly light. I held my breath, waiting for something, anything, to happen. Then, a single firefly detached itself from the swarm and fluttered towards me. It hovered inches from my face, its luminescence illuminating the intricate pattern etched on its wings, a pattern that mirrored the mark on my wrist in miniature. A jolt of energy shot through me, a connection sparking between us. In that moment, the whispers crescendoed into a cacophony of sound, but this time they weren't gibberish. Images flooded my mind a bustling village nestled beneath snow-capped mountains, a young woman with fiery red hair singing a melody I recognized as my own, a sense of overwhelming dread as a malevolent force descended upon the village. The vision fractured, leaving me gasping for breath. The firefly in front of me pulsed once more, then vanished into the darkness, taking the swarm with it. The whispers faded back into an unsettling hush. I stood there, Trembling, the echoes of the vision and the whispers swirling around me. A cold truth sank in the fragmented memories, weren't random. They were a glimpse of my past, a past I desperately needed to reclaim. The melody, the village, the woman, they were all pieces of a puzzle I didn't even know I was missing. With a newfound determination, 
I stumbled back to my guitar. The glowing mark throbbed on my wrist, but it felt different now. It wasn't just a mark. It was a connection, a bridge to a past shrouded in mystery. My fingers hovered over the strings, and for the first time since the encounter with the fireflies, a single note emerged, hesitant at first, then gaining strength. It wasn't the melody I'd been chasing, but a fragment of the one from the vision. As I played, the fragmented memory solidified the woman with red hair, her voice blending with mine in a song born out of defiance and hope. The night was far from over. Chapter 4 A Desperate Search for Answers The final note faded into the silence of the night, leaving an echo of the melody and a renewed spark of determination in its wake. The fragmented memory, though fleeting, offered a glimpse of my past. A past that the whispers and the mark on my wrist seemed determined to keep hidden. Sleep was a distant luxury, replaced by a burning need for answers. Dawn's pale fingers were just beginning to stretch across the horizon when I dialed Sarah's number. The phone rang once, twice, then her groggy voice filled my ear. Briefly, I considered hanging up, not wanting to burden her with my increasingly bizarre experiences. But the isolation, the creeping fear, was a suffocating weight I couldn't bear alone. Amelia, what's wrong? Sarah's voice, laced with concern, cut through my hesitation. Taking a deep breath, I launched into a frantic explanation. The fireflies, the whispers, the fragmented memory, it all spilled out in a torrent of words. To my surprise, instead of dismissal, a tense silence filled the line. Then, Sarah spoke, her voice quiet but steady. Okay, slow down, she said. Let's start from the beginning. Tell me exactly what happened. Relief washed over me as I recounted the events of the night in detail, the raw fear and confusion giving way to a newfound clarity with each retelling. As I finished, a heavy silence hung in the air. So, you're saying Fireflies gave you a cryptic message and a glowing tattoo? Sarah's voice held a hint of skepticism, but it was laced with concern as well. I know it sounds crazy, I admitted, feeling a familiar flush creep up my cheeks. But it's true, Sarah. I saw a vision, and the whispers my voice trailed off. All right, all right, Sarah soothed. Let's not jump to conclusions. Maybe you just had a really vivid dream. I desperately wanted to believe her, to cling to the notion that it was all just an overactive imagination. But the pulsating mark on my wrist, a constant reminder of the encounter, wouldn't let me. The mark, Sarah, I said, my voice tight with urgency. It's the same pattern as the one on the firefly's wing. And it, it seems to throb whenever the whispers come. There was a long pause on the other end of the line. Then, Sarah sighed. Okay, she conceded. This is weird. But weird doesn't necessarily mean bad. Maybe it's a sign, Amelia. Maybe it's telling you something about your past. Her words sparked a flicker of hope. Perhaps this wasn't a curse, but a key. We spent the rest of the morning huddled over my laptop scouring the internet for any information about fireflies and curses. Most of what we found was harmless folklore fireflies as harbingers of good luck or symbols of fleeting beauty, but then buried deep within an obscure academic journal. An article titled Whispers of the Luminescent, a study of forgotten folklore. It spoke of a race of ethereal beings, beings of pure light who existed in harmony with nature. They were said to possess the power to manipulate memories, and their touch could erase them entirely. The article mentioned a curse inflicted by these beings, a curse fueled by negative emotions like fear or despair. The victim's memories would slowly fade, replaced by a sense of detachment and a chilling sense of foreboding. A cold dread settled in my stomach. The symptoms, 
the fragmented memories, the whispers that fueled fear, the chilling premonitions it all fit. The glowing mark, the connection I'd felt with the firefly, it was a chilling confirmation of my worst fears. Panic rose in my throat, choking back a sob. If the article was right, then with every whisper, with every memory lost, the connection to my past, to who I was, would fade further. The melody, the woman with the fiery hair, the village they were slipping away, replaced by a horrifying emptiness. Amelia? Amelia, are you okay? Sarah's voice, laced with concern, cut through my spiraling thoughts. I looked up, tears blurring my vision. It's a curse, Sarah, I whispered, my voice choked with emotion. The fireflies, they're stealing my memories. Sarah grabbed my hand, her touch grounding me. Okay, we'll figure this out, she said, her voice firm despite the tremor in her hand. We found the problem, now we find the solution. There has to be. Chapter 5, A Fading Reflection. Sarah's words hung in the air, a beacon of hope amidst the growing storm of fear. There has to be a way to break it, she finished, her voice firm despite the tremor in her hand. We clung to that hope like a lifeline, spending the rest of the day combing through the article and any other shred of information we could find. But the article offered no easy answers, only a chilling warning. The curse, it seemed, thrived on negativity. Fear, despair, these were the emotions that fueled it. The key, then, was to stay strong, to fight back the fear with a fierce determination to reclaim my memories. Easier said than done. Every whisper, every fragmented memory lost. The once vibrant world around me seemed to lose its color, replaced by a suffocating sense of dread. Sleep became a perilous journey, haunted by the same chilling premonition the desolate landscape, the skeletal figure, and a voice rasping my name. The first real blow came a few days later. I'd arranged a video call with my parents, desperate for a dose of normalcy, a connection to my life before the fireflies. But when their faces appeared on the screen, a look of confusion replaced their initial smiles. Amelia? My mom asked hesitantly. Is that really you? You look different. The words were like a punch to the gut. Different. How could I be different? I looked the same in the mirror, messy hair, tired eyes, the now familiar mark on my wrist. But their bewildered expressions sent a shiver down my spine. Was this how I saw myself too? A stranger trapped in a familiar body? The call grew strained. Their questions about my life in the city met with hesitant replies. The fragmented memories, the fear of revealing the truth, choked my voice. Finally, the inevitable awkward silence descended. With a mumbled goodbye, I ended the call, tears blurring my vision. Looking away from the darkened screen, my gaze fell on the mirror across the room. Taking a deep breath, I approached it bracing myself for the familiar reflection. But what I saw sent a jolt of terror through me. It was me, yet not quite. The image seemed to waver, the edges of my face blurring for a fleeting moment. My eyes, usually bright and full of life, appeared hollow and distant. A scream rose in my throat, but it died on my lips, replaced by a choked sob. Panic clawed at me. Was I losing my mind? Or was this the curse? Its effects finally becoming visible. The whispers intensified, a cacophony of sound swirling around me. They sounded frantic now, urging me to do something, to seek the woman in white. The woman in white was a haunting figure mentioned in the article, a spectral being supposedly associated with the curse. The article offered no details about her, only a chilling image a woman draped in a flowing white gown, her face obscured by long flowing hair. Fear battled with desperation within me. Could this woman hold the key to breaking the curse, or was it another terrifying aspect of it? The whispers wouldn't relent, their urgency palpable. 
With a trembling hand, I reached for my phone. The image of the woman in white burned into my mind. I had to find her. It was a desperate gamble, but it was the only hope I had left. As I began scouring the internet, a horrifying realization dawned on me the more I searched, the more I risked losing myself entirely. The reflection in the mirror seemed to flicker again, a stark reminder of the time slipping away. The fight was far from over, and the stakes had never been higher. Chapter 6 A Journey into the Past The relentless whispers echoed in my head even after I shut down the computer. Sleep was a distant luxury, replaced by a frantic search for information about the woman in white. Every dead end, every unanswered question, fueled the gnawing fear in my stomach. But amidst the despair, a flicker of hope remained the mention of my childhood home. The fragmented memory of the melody, the woman with fiery hair, all seemed to point towards that place. Sarah, ever the pragmatist, dismissed it as a desperate grasp at straws. But I clung to it with a desperate fervor. Maybe, just maybe, my past held the key to breaking the curse. Convincing Sarah to embark on this seemingly wild goose chase was no easy feat. It took a night of passionate pleading, fueled by a potent mix of desperation and caffeine, to finally win her over. By morning's light, we were packed and on the road, heading towards a past shrouded in mystery. The drive was a blur of unfamiliar towns and forgotten memories. Every twist in the road, every landmark that sparked a flicker of recognition, fueled a bittersweet hope. The town where I grew up seemed smaller than in my memory, the houses dwarfed by the towering trees that lined the streets. Our destination, a modest two-story house nestled on a quiet suburban street felt strangely alien. It had been years since I'd last stepped foot inside, years spent erasing painful memories and building a new life. But with each hesitant step across the threshold, the past flooded back in a rush, the scent of lavender potpourri, the worn wooden floorboards that creaked under my feet, the faint strains of a familiar melody echoing from upstairs. The house was exactly as I'd left it, a museum of childhood memories. Dust motes danced in the pale sunlight filtering through the windows, illuminating a lifetime of forgotten treasures. Sarah gave me a worried look as I moved through the rooms, a ghost revisiting a forgotten life. My attention was drawn to a dusty desk, tucked away in a corner of what used to be my parents' study. On top of it lay a leather-bound journal, its surface worn smooth with time. My hands trembled as I picked it up, the cover cool and reassuring against my palm. The inscription on the front page sent a jolt through me, Amelia's songbook. Opening the book with a reverence born of desperation, I flipped through pages filled with handwritten lyrics and musical notation. Each song was a memory, a birthday celebration, a first heartbreak, a journey filled with youthful optimism. Then, I saw it a melody, its notes mirroring the fragmented memory from the night of the fireflies. Tears welled up in my eyes. It was the song from the vision, the melody that resonated within me, a potent link to my missing past. As I traced the notes with trembling fingers, a hidden inscription appeared on the back page faded ink, revealing a cryptic message. Seek solace in the white lady's embrace, where whispers turn to song and memories find their place. The message sent shivers down my spine, the woman in white, whispers turning to song, memories finding their place it all pointed to the same thing. We needed to find her. With renewed purpose, we scoured the house, searching for any clues about the white lady or the location mentioned in the inscription. Hours melted away as we sifted through old photographs, rummaged through dusty attics, and examined every inch of the house. Just as despair began to set in, Sarah let out a gasp, holding up a folded piece of paper tucked away behind a loose floorboard. It was a faded map, its edges frayed and torn. 
but the image on the map was unmistakable. A small, dilapidated cabin nestled deep within the woods on the outskirts of town. A legend scrawled in the corner confirmed our suspicion. The white lady's dwelling. Hope, fragile yet tenacious, flickered in my chest. This was it. The cabin, the woman in white, they held the key to breaking the curse, to reclaiming my stolen memories. But a tremor of fear ran through me as we looked at the deepening shadows outside. Night was approaching, and with it, the whispers would return. We had no time to waste. Packing essentials and Sarah's trusty flashlight, we left the house, the melody from the songbook echoing in my ears. The road ahead was shrouded in darkness, the destination uncertain. But for the first time since the encounter with the fireflies, I felt a glimmer of hope. The journey into the past had begun. Chapter 7, The Price of Memories. The woods were a maze of gnarled branches and inky shadows, the only light filtering through the dense canopy in thin, broken beams. The air hung heavy with the smell of damp earth and decaying leaves, the silence broken only by the crunch of our boots on the forest floor. With each step deeper into the woods, the fragmented memories intensified, swirling around me like a malevolent fog. The whispers, once a cacophony of sound, began to resolve into distinct words, their message chillingly clear. They spoke of a fire, a terrifying blaze that had consumed my childhood home, stealing the lives of loved ones and leaving an indelible scar on my young mind. Dread coiled in my stomach, a primal fear urging me to turn back. This was the memory I'd buried deep, a trauma so profound I'd built an entire wall of forgetfulness around it. The fireflies, the curse, it all seemed to stem from this one horrific event. But the whispers were insistent, urging me to face it, to confront my past if I ever hoped to reclaim my memories. The melody from the songbook echoed in my head, a beacon of hope amidst the encroaching darkness. It was a melody I vaguely remembered singing with someone, a melody of defiance and resilience. But who? My parents? Perhaps the answer lay within the cabin, within the enigmatic woman in white. The cabin emerged from the shadows like a skeletal apparition. Its once proud facade was now weathered and warped, windows boarded shut and paint peeling from the walls. A sense of foreboding hung heavy in the air, but there was no turning back. Taking a deep breath, I pushed open the creaking door, the stale, musty air of disuse assaulting me. Dust motes danced in the beam of Sarah's flashlight revealing a scene of utter desolation. Broken furniture lay scattered across the floor, cobwebs draped like ghostly shrouds from the rafters. The whispers intensified, swirling around us, their chilling message echoing within the empty halls. Amelia, Sarah whispered, her voice tight with concern. Are you okay? I nodded, but my throat felt dry and constricted. We searched the cabin room by room, finding nothing but decay and remnants of a forgotten life. Finally, we reached a small room tucked away at the back of the house. As Sarah shone the light on the room, a gasp escaped my lips. There, in the center of the room, stood a rocking chair, swaying gently as if stirred by an unseen hand. A white shawl lay draped across its back. The whispers crescendoed into a single word, remember. Terror and a strange sense of anticipation warred within me. This was it, the confrontation I'd been dreading. Sarah squeezed my hand, her touch a grounding force amidst the swirling emotions. Tentatively, I approached the rocking chair, my heart pounding a frantic rhythm against my ribs. As my hand brushed against the shawl, a wave of memories flooded my mind the crackling flames the screams, the suffocating smoke. I saw my parents, their faces etched with fear, a look of love and concern aimed at me. Then, a searing pain, a blinding flash of light, and then nothing.
The memory slammed into me with the force of a tidal wave, threatening to drown me in grief and regret. Tears streamed down my face as I relived the horror, the guilt of being the only survivor crushing me like a vice. But amidst the pain, a flicker of defiance emerged. The melody from the songbook, sung in a voice that resonated with my own, filled the room. It was the voice of a young girl, a girl who had faced unimaginable loss but refused to let it break her. As I embraced the memories, both the good and the bad, a wave of relief washed over me. The whispers faded, replaced by a comforting silence. The rocking chair stopped swaying, the shawl falling limply to the floor. The curse was broken. Collapsing onto the floor, I sobbed, the weight of the past finally releasing its hold. Sarah held me close, her comforting presence a balm to my wounded soul. The journey had been arduous, the price of reclaiming my memories steep. But as I looked around the desolate cabin, a newfound strength bloomed within me. This wasn't just about escaping the curse, it was about confronting the past, understanding it, and moving forward. The fireflies, the woman in white, they had forced me to confront a trauma I had spent years hiding from. In the process, they had helped me reclaim a part of myself I thought was lost forever. The journey wasn't over. There were still fragments of memories missing, pieces of the puzzle yet to be unearthed. But for the first time since the encounter with the fireflies, I felt a sense of hope. Chapter 8 The Woman in White The weight of the past receded, leaving behind a raw vulnerability. Tears still clung to my eyelashes as I pulled myself together, Sarah's comforting presence a steady anchor amidst the emotional turmoil. We had come searching for the woman in white, and it seemed our search was over. But a new fear, distinct from the chilling whispers, gnawed at me. The rocking chair remained still, the white shawl a discarded memory. But the air in the room crackled with a strange energy, a sense of anticipation. As if responding to my trepidation, a figure materialized in the corner, the woman in white. She was everything the internet article described an ethereal being draped in a flowing white gown, her face obscured by long silver hair. An unsettling glow emanated from her, illuminating the dust particles swirling around her. The air grew colder, and a primal fear threatened to consume me. Amelia, her voice echoed through the room, a soft, melodic whisper that sent shivers down my spine. You have faced your past, embraced the memories you wish to forget. I opened my mouth to speak, but no words came out. My gaze darted between her and Sarah, who stood frozen beside me, a mixture of fear and determination etched on her face. The curse is broken, the woman in white continued, her voice devoid of emotion. But fragments remain, lost in the chasm of forgotten experiences. My heart hammered in my chest. Each word she spoke felt like a riddle, a veiled challenge. These lost fragments, were they the key to fully reclaiming my past? There is a way to retrieve them, she said, her voice dropping to a barely audible murmur. But it comes at a cost. Sarah stepped forward, her voice trembling slightly. What cost? She demanded. The woman in white turned towards her, her glowing eyes boring into Sarah's. Silence, friend. This concerns only Amelia. Sarah hesitated, then with a worried glance at me, retreated a few steps. The silence stretched, thick and heavy. The cost, whatever it was, sent a tremor of dread through me. What memory could be so terrible? so devastating that reclaiming it would be a worse fate than the curse itself. There is one memory, the woman in white continued, her voice a chilling whisper. A buried truth, the heart of the curse. Embrace it and your memories will be whole. But the price, the price is oblivion. The word echoed in the small room, stripping the air of all warmth. Oblivion. An endless darkness, 
a void devoid of memories, of identity, of everything that made me Amelia. This was the terrible cost, sacrificing a part of myself to become whole. A thousand questions swirled in my mind. What was the memory? Why was it so destructive? But the woman in white remained silent, her form radiating an unsettling pressure, urging me to make a decision. The thought of Sarah, of the life I'd built over the years, filled me with a desperate need to fight. But there was also the nagging emptiness, the fragmented memories taunting me with their incompleteness. I looked at the rocking chair, a symbol of a life shattered by tragedy, and then back at the woman in white. Was the pain of the forgotten past worse than the oblivion she offered? Was there another way, some hidden path to wholeness without sacrifice? The silence roared in my ears, demanding an answer. The weight of the decision pressed down on me, suffocating. In that moment, I understood the true power of the woman in white, not just to manipulate memories, but to exploit the deepest vulnerabilities, the desperate yearning for completeness. As I stared at the enigmatic figure, I knew the answer wasn't going to be easy. It wouldn't be a clean break, a simple choice. This was a battle, a fight for my mind, my memories, and ultimately, my sense of self. And the fight had just begun. Chapter 9. The Forgotten Melody The woman in White's chilling offer hung heavy in the air, a choice shrouded in darkness. Oblivion, or the terrifying prospect of reliving a forgotten memory so devastating it could shatter me completely. Every fiber of my being resisted the idea, yet the yearning for a complete past tugged at me with an unrelenting force. Sarah, her face etched with concern, stepped forward. Amelia, don't listen to her. There has to be another way. Her voice, a lifeline in the suffocating silence, pulled me from the brink of a decision I wasn't ready to make. But the woman in white remained unfazed. There is always a way, she said, her voice a melodic whisper that somehow resonated within me. But sometimes, the path to healing lies through the wounds themselves. She held out a hand, a faint, ethereal glow emanating from her palm. As I stared at it, a flicker of recognition sparked in my mind the same shimmering light that had emanated from the fireflies. Could she, could she show me the forgotten memory? My gaze darted towards Sarah, seeking her silent support. In her eyes, I saw a mixture of fear and reluctant understanding. Taking a deep breath, I reached out and placed my hand in the woman in whites. A jolt of energy surged through me, a torrent of images flooding my mind. I was a child again, carefree and joyful. But with each image came a growing sense of unease, a memory I desperately wanted to push away. It was then that I saw him, Liam, my childhood friend. Unlike the other children, Liam wasn't afraid of the fireflies. He saw them for what they were beautiful, fleeting creatures with a magical touch. We spent countless summer nights chasing the glowing insects, filling our laughter into the warm night air. But not everyone appreciated Liam's fascination. Other children whispered about him, calling him strange, a friend of the dark. The adults were no better, their fear morphing into suspicion, their whispers laced with accusations of witchcraft. The memories turned sour, the joy of friendship replaced by a suffocating sense of isolation. Liam, ostracized and shunned, became a ghost on the fringes of our childhood games. The last image I saw was of Liam, his once bright eyes filled with sadness, disappearing into the woods, the fireflies twinkling like a swarm of silent farewells. The memory ended abruptly, leaving me gasping for breath. Guilt and grief clawed at me, a suffocating weight threatening to consume me. Liam, my friend, the one who understood my fascination with the fireflies, had been ostracized for it, and I, I hadn't stood up for him. 
Tears streamed down my face as the weight of the forgotten memory settled in. Was this the memory the woman in white wanted me to embrace? Was the curse fueled by my guilt, my failure to stand by my friend? But amidst the grief, a melody surfaced a haunting, bittersweet lullaby. It was a song Liam and I used to sing together, a melody filled with both innocence and a strange sense of longing. The woman in white's form shimmered, the glow in her palm growing brighter as the melody echoed within me. Suddenly, it hit me. This wasn't just a memory of loss, it was a memory of friendship, a melody born out of shared experiences. Maybe, just maybe, this melody infused with the power of our lost friendship could be the key to breaking the curse for good. As I hummed the lullaby, a warmth spread through me, a sense of hope battling with the lingering grief. The woman in white watched me, her form flickering in and out of focus. With a final parting glow, she dissolved into nothingness, leaving behind a strange sense of peace in the desolate cabin. Sarah rushed to my side, her arms enveloping me in a tight embrace. It's okay, she whispered. We'll get through this together. Wiping away my tears, I looked at her, a new resolve burning in my eyes. The forgotten memory, painful as it was, had opened a door. The melody, a symbol of a lost friendship, might be the very weapon I needed to break free from the curse and finally reclaim my past, peace by lingering peace. The journey ahead wouldn't be easy, but with Sarah by my side and the forgotten melody ringing in my ears, I was no longer facing it alone. The battle with the curse had taken a new turn, and for the first time, I felt a sliver of hope pierce the darkness. Chapter 10, A Song Against the Darkness. The drive back from the abandoned cabin was a blur. The weight of the forgotten memory sat heavy on my chest, but it was intertwined with a newfound determination. The melody, a bittersweet echo from the past, resonated within me, a beacon of hope in the darkness. Back in the familiar confines of my apartment, a strange silence greeted me. The whispers, once a constant torment, were absent. But the absence felt ominous, a lull before the storm. My gaze fell on the mark on my wrist, the pulsating light now a sickly yellow, emanating a malevolent heat. A shiver ran down my spine. This was it the final confrontation. The fireflies wouldn't surrender their hold easily. The melody, a fragile weapon fueled by memory and friendship, was my only chance. Sarah, sensing my anxiety, squeezed my hand. We're here for you, Amelia, she said, her voice firm despite the worry in her eyes. Taking a deep breath, I picked up my guitar. The worn wood felt reassuring against my fingers, a familiar comfort in this unfamiliar war. My fingers hovered over the strings, hesitant at first, then finding their place. As I began to play the opening notes of the melody, the whispers returned, a cacophony of despair and fear. They swirled around me, a dark fog threatening to engulf me. The mark on my wrist pulsed with an even more intense light, the heat scorching my skin. But I pressed on, my voice rising above the whispers, weaving the melody into the fabric of the room. The melancholic notes filled the air, a testament to a lost friendship and a desperate plea for redemption. As I sang, a strange thing happened. The pulsating yellow light emanating from the mark began to recede, replaced by a soft white glow. The whispers, once a torrent of negativity, morphed into a mournful hum their power waning with each passing note. The melody, infused with the emotions of the forgotten memory, seemed to have a life of its own. It poured out of me, a song of defiance against the darkness, a plea for the light of memory to return. For a moment, the room pulsed with an ethereal light, a battleground between the darkness of the curse and the melody of my past. Sarah stood beside me, her eyes wide with wonder as the room shimmered with an otherworldly glow. 
Then, as abruptly as it began, the light subsided. The whispers faded into an unsettling silence. The mark on my wrist was gone, replaced by smooth, unblemished skin. A wave of exhaustion washed over me, but beneath it there was a sense of exhilaration, a victory hard won. I looked at Sarah, a smile spreading across my face. It's over, I whispered, my voice hoarse but filled with relief. She pulled me into a tight hug, the joy in her eyes mirroring my own. The journey had been long and arduous, filled with terrifying encounters and painful discoveries. But as we held each other close, I knew this wasn't the end. It was a new beginning. The melody, a whisper from a forgotten past, had not only broken the curse, but also unlocked a part of myself I thought was lost forever. The memory of Liam, the guilt I carried for so long, would forever be a part of me. A reminder of the importance of friendship and the power of facing the past, even the painful parts. The road ahead wouldn't be clear. There were still fragmented memories to piece together, questions about the fireflies and the woman in white that remained unanswered. But with Sarah by my side and the melody echoing in my heart, I faced the future with a newfound sense of courage and hope. The darkness might return, but now I knew the power of music, of memory, and the unwavering strength of friendship to banish it back into the shadows. Chapter 11, Breaking the Chains. Relief washed over me like a tidal wave, leaving behind a pleasant exhaustion. The silence that followed the melody's final note felt heavy, yet strangely comforting. Sarah held me close her fingers tracing soothing circles on my back. As I pulled away, a newfound lightness filled my eyes. It's gone, I whispered, the words tasting sweet on my tongue. The mark, the whispers, they're gone. Sarah's face broke into a radiant smile. Thank God, she breathed, her voice thick with emotion. I never doubted you for a second, Amelia. But even as we basked, in the fragile victory, a faint unease gnawed at me. The silence felt too perfect, too sudden. The fireflies, the whispers, the curse they seemed to operate by their own unpredictable logic. This quiet interlude could be a mere lull before another storm. And as if on cue, a familiar prickling sensation spread across my skin. My gaze darted towards my wrist, a faint, ominous glow began to emanate from the exact spot where the mark had been. The whispers, barely audible at first, started to rise like a malevolent tide. Panic surged through me. Had I underestimated the power of the curse? Was the melody just a temporary reprieve? Despair threatened to engulf me, but then a single memory pierced through the rising tide of negativity. It was a fragmented image, a single frame from the forgotten memory Liam, his eyes filled with a quiet strength, holding out his hand to me. It was a gesture of friendship, a silent plea for me to remember the good, not just the sorrow. Taking a deep breath, I squeezed my eyes shut and focused on that memory. The melody, dormant for a fleeting moment, rekindled within me, stronger this time fueled by the renewed sense of purpose. As I began to sing, my voice shaking with a newfound determination, the glow on my wrist flickered and pulsed. The whispers, once a cacophony of negativity, morphed into a discordant chorus, their power waning with each note. Everything blurred into a whirlwind of sound and light. Fragments of memories, long forgotten, surfaced like bubbles from the depths of my mind. Faces, once blurry and indistinct, regained their warmth my parents, their eyes filled with love and concern. Sarah, her unwavering support, a constant presence. And Liam, his youthful smile, a beacon of friendship. With each verse of the melody, the glow on my wrist dimmed further. The whispers, now a desperate whimper, began to retreat 
echoing back towards the shadows from which they came. Sarah watched, transfixed, witnessing the raw emotion that flowed through me with the melody. Suddenly, a figure materialized in the corner of the room, the woman in white. Her form, however, was not the same. The ethereal glow that surrounded her had dimmed, replaced by a weariness that mirrored the diminishing power of the curse. Her eyes, once an unsettling white, now held a flicker of understanding, perhaps even a hint of sadness. As the melody reached its final note, the woman in white raised a hand in a silent farewell, her form dissolving into wisps of white light that scattered harmlessly into the air. Silence descended once more, this time heavy with a strange finality. The curse was broken, the darkness banished for now. I looked at Sarah, exhaustion etched on her face, but an unmistakable glow of triumph in her eyes. We did it, Amelia, she whispered, pulling me into another tight embrace. We actually did it. A wave of relief washed over me, tears stinging my eyes. The journey had been arduous, a descent into the darkness of my own past. But as we stood together, bathed in the soft light of morning, I knew the strength of memories. The power of friendship had ultimately prevailed. The fireflies might return, the whispers might resurface, but now I faced them with a newfound confidence, armed with the melody, a testament to the enduring power of human connection. And perhaps somewhere along the way, I might even find the answers to the remaining questions, the purpose of the fireflies, the enigmatic woman in white. For now, though, the silence was a welcome balm, a space to heal, to connect, and to rebuild the life that had been fractured by the curse. The melody, a bittersweet reminder of loss and friendship, echoed in my heart, a lullaby for a new beginning. Chapter 12 The silence stretched on, a stark contrast to the cacophony of emotions that had just unfolded. Sarah's arms loosened around me, and a shaky breath escaped her lips. We stood there, bathed in the morning, sunlight filtering through the window, the weight of the past few days finally settling in. We did it, she whispered her voice thick with disbelief. I managed a weak smile, the exhaustion clinging to me like a second skin. The melody, once a powerful weapon, now echoed faintly within me, a bittersweet lullaby of the ordeal we'd just faced. The curse was broken. The whispers, the chilling presence, they were gone, leaving behind an emptiness that felt strangely unsettling. It was as if a part of me a twisted and menacing part had been ripped away, leaving a void that needed to be filled. Following days were a blur of doctor visits, tests, and bewildered explanations. The doctors, unable to explain the sudden disappearance of the strange mark and the psychological symptoms, chalked it up to stress and exhaustion. But Sarah and I knew better. We knew the cost of the melody, the sacrifice it demanded. The curse might be broken, but the memory of Liam, the friend I'd failed, remained a missing piece, a constant ache in my heart. One afternoon, I wandered through the park, the melody humming softly in the back of my mind. The laughter of children playing on the swings brought a smile to my lips, a stark contrast to the chilling echoes of the past. But then I saw him, a young boy no older than eight, sitting alone on a bench, his gaze fixed on a swarm of fireflies dancing amidst the twilight. He looked different. There was a melancholic air about him, a loneliness that mirrored the one I'd felt as a child. An inexplicable urge propelled me forward. I sat on the bench beside him, my heart pounding a frantic rhythm against my ribs. Do you like fireflies? I asked my voice barely above a whisper. The boy turned his head, his eyes wide with surprise. They were a familiar shade of blue, a color that sent a jolt through me. They're beautiful, he whispered, his voice filled with an innocent wonder. 
We sat there in silence for a while, watching the fireflies flit through the gathering dusk. The melody within me grew stronger, a bridge between the past and present, a yearning for a connection. Do you have a friend to play with? I asked, gently. He shook his head, a flicker of sadness crossing his features. No, he mumbled. Taking a deep breath, I offered a hesitant smile. Would you like to make one? The boy looked at me, his eyes searching mine. In that moment, a flicker of hope ignited within me, a fragile flame that mirrored the fireflies dancing in the twilight. Curse was broken, but a new chapter had begun. A chapter filled with uncertainty, yet also with the promise of healing, of friendship, and perhaps even the chance to mend the broken pieces of the past. The melody continued to hum within me, a bittersweet reminder of loss and a hopeful anthem for a future yet unwritten, yet 